Hey, welcome back. I decided to make an IoT chessboard. I've been playing chess online a lot, but it just didn't feel the same with, by clicking a mouse, so I wanted to use actual tactile chess pieces for this. The goal of the chessboard is to be able to play chess with anyone from anywhere in the world. The first key part of this chessboard is to identify which piece needs to be moved to which square. To solve this, I decided to use an LED matrix. I then ordered some LEDs. While I waited for them to arrive in the mail, I started using a programming IDE called Processing. To practice working with matrices, I decided to work on the game Snake. This is a good proof of concept as I'm constantly manipulating the values of the matrix. Finally, the LEDs arrived in the mail, and I was able to get testing and make sure that all of the different LEDs lit up along the strip. My next test was to see if I could cut the strip, solder it, and make sure the LEDs worked. It's a bit hard to see with the lighting that I have, so I used a piece of paper to diffuse the light so you could see it a bit better on the camera. After I was able to prove that, I cut more strips and soldered 8 of them together to have an 8x8 matrix for the chessboard. I then began working on a prototype with the Holopex sensor. This is how I decided I would detect the chess pieces on the chessboard. By putting magnets into the chess pieces, I could detect when they were put down onto the chessboard as well as lifted off by using a rising and falling monostable circuit. If you know a lot about Minecraft Redstone, you're probably familiar with this concept. My next prototype pretty much puts the IoT into the chessboard. In order to get the chessboard to communicate with the computer, which would then communicate with online servers that uses the chess API, I installed Bluetooth into the chessboard so that I could communicate from the Arduino to the processing IDE. I then taped it to a clipboard. This next test is to turn on all the LEDs without any delay. I appear to have ripped a hole in space-time. I'm going to fix that real quick. Okay, I think I solved the issue. Never mind, I appear to have made it worse. Okay, I'll be right back once again. Alright, test number three. And third time's the charm. It's bright as heck, but hey, it's actually working. By the way, it's important that we update all 64 LEDs at once, rather than line by line, just so that it's, all of it is a smooth animation. Next, I was able to get Snake working on the matrix via the processing serial library. So this has a hard line to the computer, which will eventually be replaced by the Bluetooth communication. For the Bluetooth communication, it was taking too long to send the entire message of what LEDs needed to be updated. It turns out that I was being redundant with the information and only needed to update the head and the tail of the snake rather than all the LEDs that are already in the correct color. This optimization made it a lot quicker when using the Bluetooth communication, which is important for the final chessboard as it's only important that we change or update the changing positions rather than any of the pieces that are already in their spot and not changing. I put over a piece of paper to filter the LEDs. At this point I was trying to consider if I wanted to diffuse the light with paper or if I wanted to go with frosted glass for the final chessboard. The diffusion of the paper is nice because it takes off the harsh LED light, but I'm still deciding on what I want to do for the final product. In next week's video, I'll be working with shift registers to take all of the different inputs of all the squares, as well as soldering a lot of components, implementing Pong, and a lot of fun out of the things. If you're excited for that, you know, please subscribe, and if you like this video, why not leave a like? Thanks for watching and have a great day.